Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Hi-Fi Hour. Today, I have the esteemed pleasure of having my good buddy, Livio Kukuza. Did I say that right? Kukuza. Yes, perfect. Kukuza. Okay, perfect. Um, he's coming to us all the way from Italy. Uh, he is now the chief, uh, Design technical, of- des- chief technical designer. At chief Sony? design officer, I prefer. Okay. The design is a word that I like normally. It's what it's what you're really good at. Um, so, Livio, let's let's start from the beginning. Uh, sure. What is your educational background and background in general, and then how did you get your start into hi-fi? Uh, what we can say, I have uh, basically I had uh, two big influences in my life. Uh, mm-hmm. One was the uh, arts and creativity, uh, which I was uh, really good for since uh, since I was very young, and the other one was uh, the audio and the uh, electronic world because my father had a hi-fi shop when I was young, and my grandfather before him uh, did the same. So I, I, I grew up uh, basically surrounded by hi-fi hi-fi gears and uh, and toys. Uh, so this is uh, basically my background. Then uh, I studied design in uh, Milan for uh, three years, and uh, and I started working with uh, with what I prefer the, the most, uh, which is the the toy world. And I started with uh, with Lego, uh, you know, building bricks. And uh, and then uh, when when the adventure with Lego. Uh, finished, I, I decided to to go with the with the second passion I had was that was the iFi and uh, and here I am. Well, we all know Lego is almost as expensive as high end hi-fi. We, <laughs> we know <laughs> all, that. all the beautiful toys are quite expensive. They, they well, yeah, they there's some really interesting design as well, and that's amazing that you went from the uh, one toy to another in in essence, you know. Um, and you have that background in hi-fi. Is there any particular piece of hi-fi that you remember back in your childhood that your dad was very passionate about? Oh yeah, I I have a lot of nice uh, memories about that period. Um, the, the system that I uh, that my father still have at home is a Luxman system with a pair of uh, monitor audio uh, speaker at the beginning. Now, of course, he has some spubber. Um, but there was some uh, particular pieces where I was uh, particularly, uh, let me say, influenced by. Uh, let me say everything that was coming from uh, the USA. Uh, so the audio research, uh, Mark Levinson, um the oracle turntable which are coming from canada by the way um that uh, that part the magnum magnum pan speakers uh, flat panels um, all the let me say american heritage was uh, was really important for me in the uh hi-fi uh, culture formation that's interesting because in america we're all very interested in the the European hi-fi culture, and it might be the <laughs> vice versa over there. Um, either way, I think hi-fi in general has has brought a lot of people into this hobby and and uh, created a passion for for music again. You know, yeah. Because um, I know there was a period of time where it the, it was just a kind of a strange time between the late '90s, early 2000s, and then. Now we're starting to get back into two channel over the last ten years, and then you know I believe it's people like you that are at the forefront of innovating and creating new things. You know, that's got to be an exciting time for you, correct? Honestly, it's the best moment of my life. <laughs> I have uh, nothing to complain. I I have a beautiful life. I I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do since uh, I was a child. I'm, you know, expressing myself, doing uh, design and, uh, uh, and and doing design for audio. It's, it's you know, something very special to me. And uh, I think this is a very good moment for audio in general. Uh, mm-hmm. People are listening more music than ever in these days. Uh, maybe in some cases they are listening to music in the 
uh, in a different way from what we, let me say, say is the, is the right thing. Uh, but the music culture is clearly growing and uh, the desire for beautiful, beautiful things and, uh, and quality is, uh, is growing a lot. Um, so I, I think it's, it's really a good moment. It's, it's an amazing moment actually. Yes, absolutely. Now, prior to, uh, Sonus Faber, uh, you did a few things that I actually picked out individually because I thought they were so beautiful. Um, you did a, you. you did a, M, the M2 tech young and Vaughn. Bon. Mm -hmm. uh, you did w Wadia and cor correct me if I'm saying these names wrong. Uh, no, uh, Wadia intuition, uh, yes. the, J the Jacob Ludwig DAC one. Oh yeah. And my personal favorite, the, uh, Audi of flight wow. Strumento series. <laughs> Um, well, you were going to, to say that. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, what takes me back is that you like using, I've noticed that you like using lines and curves in your designs to create these works of art um, and not just speaker enclosures or just metal boxes. You you really create these, these works of art that people could be proud to showcase in their system, you know? Um, how did you come up with some of this stuff? Is, is that something, the lines and the curves, is it something that's kind of your signature uh, type deal? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's uh, it's probably a little bit more complicated than that. It's, uh, uh, it's a language that I sort of uh, build in, in, the, in my career. Uh, mixing uh, uh, what I what I think is the is the essential uh, line uh, needed to create a product, and then a sort of uh, uh, let me say distinctive uh, signs that are uh, more specific to one brand to the other brand, um, and a, a little bit of uh, craziness sometimes. Some uh, some you know some. A touch of uh, uh, of uh, creativity here and there. It's uh, it's needed to to make the product more interesting. Um, it's a little it's a little bit like designing a toy where you have to impress your customer in some way. He has to he has to find in every product that little detail that uh, makes the product very special and different from uh, one to the other the another. And uh, so it's a mix of, of, of the different things. But uh, really, to me, the most important part is to be able to respect the soul of the brand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, when you design uh, a speaker like a uh, Sonos Fab speaker, uh, you, have, you, you have to deal with a brand that is 40 years old, Italian, uh, craftsmanship, uh, you know, wood and... Uh, and uh, natural material, then when you have to approach a brand like Macintosh or Audio Research, which I did in the, in the past, um, the, 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 um, the elements, the, the soul of the brand is different and you have to respect that. So uh, you, you have to find the balance between your personality as a designer and the personality of the brand. You cannot do just uh, what you imagine um, in, a, in a completely free way. Uh, there are some rules and, uh, and each brand has its own, its own rules. Uh, so it's always a balance of, uh, of different elements coming from me and coming from the brand and the history of the brand. Now, um, you've designed, I mean, like I said, you've designed a lot of amazing things. And I remember the first time I contacted you, it was, um, I, 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 I can't remember exactly the product, but it was something very, very interesting. And I, and I even uh, reached out to you and said, man, that, that is amazing work. God, I wish I could remember the product. Um, but, you know, is it, okay, so from a design standpoint, um, you design the, the exterior and, the, and have, you know, obviously a lot of say in the interior with the engineers, correct? Yes. Um, well, when I was uh, working as a, as a freelance, uh, doing that, uh, that work uh, you remember uh, for Odia Flight and Norma and other, other, other brands, I was more like uh, a pure industrial designer. So mm -hmm. I was receiving the input from the engineer 
and I was just, uh, you know, collecting the information and staying inside the boundaries of, uh, uh, you know, of the circuit and the and the and the and the internal uh, uh, volumes of the unit. Mm -hmm. um, what what I'm doing now is it's a more, let me say. Uh, complete kind of uh, approach uh, and I think one of the secret of the success of our product right now is the fact that really engineering and design uh, are one team inside the company um, and we are working together so you know it's 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 really difficult to design address uh, if you don't know uh, what what will go inside that, that dress and uh, and uh, it's also difficult for an engineer to design something that has a usage that has a as a uh, has to dial with the customer if he doesn't know uh, what the designers are envisioning as a, as a human interface as a, as a, as the product uh, overall looking and uh, and so really i think the secret of the success of sons faber in this moment is that we have this uh, uh, really capable young and very motivated team under one roof um, uh, where designers acoustic designers marketing people or the creative uh, all the creative people we have are really working uh, together day by day influencing themselves um, uh, you know, in, in, in with with the with the with the target, with the clear vision of uh, of uh, create creating a better better products. Perfect, perfect. And uh, something you said in an interview once um, was that a designer is I'm quoting is, is that a designer is never called on to simply address the aesthetic aspects, independently of the technical ones, as many believe must but must necessarily find the right combination, the fine line and the coexistence between forms and function. Uh, can you tell me a bit of, more about this philosophy? And do you feel this is one of the biggest factors that separate you from any other designers that just solely focus on aesthetics and neglect technical design? Here is Nina. <laughs> <laughs> There's your cat. <laughs> uh, yes, I was, uh, as I was saying uh, before, uh, the two things must, must be part of the same of the same uh, intent mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes you know the the the, uh, the product that are uh, that are made uh, with with a with a more specific target in design or uh, engineering normally you can feel they are they have something uh, missing there is something missing in them uh, there are a lot of perfect examples of where design is really following function and vice versa. And uh, I think it's it's really the core of, of our work. I, I always like to say that designers normally are intended like artists in some way. Mm -hmm. We are not. Uh, in my opinion, we are, we are not uh, artists. The artist is someone who is... Uh, completely free to do whatever he has in mind. Uh, designers has to follow the rules and the boundaries. The boundaries are the, the DNA of the brand, the engineering, and without boundaries, there is no good design. So it's a, it's a, different, uh, it's a different job and the two things must be connected. So the, the, the most they are close together, the better is the result, in my opinion, of course. Nice. Well, I mean, at the moment, you're one of the most sought after designers in the industry. Uh, we all know that. So what was it about Sonus Faber that caught your eye and inspired you to join their team? Well, uh, Sonus Faber in Italy is a sort of myth uh, in the audio industry, of course, but not only. Uh, it's a brand that really uh, made a difference. Uh, Franco Serblin at the beginning uh, had a, had a really uh, impressive intuition, creating uh, speakers that were not only like good sounding speakers, but also uh, beautiful, beautiful product. Uh, so I always imagine that Sonus Faber was the perfect example of what I was envisioning as a as a as a as a product because it's again, it's the form that is following function and. Uh, the way 
he approached just the form was amazing mm-hmm. uh, together with the sound. And, uh, and so when I, when I had the opportunity to, to make the, my very first uh, interview in Sons Faber, my very first uh, uh, presentation uh, for them, I was so motivated and happy to do that. It was like a dream. Um, and then I didn't know before, but I discovered that Sons Faber in that moment was also owning uh, audio research, which is... Uh, as as many can 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 uh, can say, one of my favorite brand in audio, mm-hmm. and so it was you know it was a perfect combination. It was uh, it was fantastic, and, uh, and 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 really I had the opportunity to to work with a company uh, which is uh, uh, now uh, an amazing an amazing group of people. Not only that, there is a specific uh, a palpable. Uh, culture of design and quality in that company, uh, which is very difficult to replicate, uh, and which made uh, my job a little bit easier because uh, you know they were they were already used to do beautiful things and to to keep a lot of attention to details to everything that is uh, uh, is part of the product, um, and so it was. Uh, you know, it was uh, it, it was a perfect uh, perfect decision, perfect moment, and I'm 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 really happy to uh, to be uh, where I am now uh, because the the company is is growing, still growing a lot, and uh, and you know the fact that uh, our products are going all over the world and uh, and uh, are appreciated by. Uh, a, a bigger name, a bigger, uh, let me say, number of people uh, mm-hmm. with different culture uh, means that uh, we are doing we are doing it properly. Perfect. Um, you know, the first time I experienced a Sonus Faber speaker was at RMAF Rocky Mountain Audio Fest in 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was actually my first hi-fi show I ever went to, and. Uh, I that was one of my favorite rooms. I'll be honest. It's the thing is, is I always saw it as, uh, you know, the Lamborghini or Ferrari of audio. You know, yes. it's, it's one of those things that the performance is amazing. The, the design is phenomenal. It's an iconic brand. You know, it's very iconic. However, for me, I, I would, I, you know, it wasn't in my price range, unfortunately at the moment, you know, (laughs) someday, you know, however, however, um, uh, you know, I, after talking with our mutual friend, Julia, she is a a marketing director, I believe for Macintosh group, which now is everything is under that umbrella. Um, I recently evaluated Sonus Faber's Lumina series, Lumina one and two, and I believe three is on the way. Mm-hmm. So, and I told Julia this uh, in email the other day. I told her that uh, you guys, Sonus Faber, uh, single handedly ruined speakers for me <laughs> because, uh, yeah. and this is just from the Lumina series. We're not, I haven't really had a chance to evaluate anything beyond that. I'm afraid to, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is. The Lumina is an entry level. For those of you that don't know, uh, Lumina is an entry level um, offering that Sonus Faber created and launched in 2020 um, during the pandemic, I believe. You know, and it was you know with budget in mind. You know, they I believe the Lumina ones come in at around eight ninety nine for the pair U.S. dollars. Um, so. It's priced to compete with, you know, a lot of the other middle of the road, uh, you know, me- medium budget loudspeakers out there. However, it it provides a very ultra high end vibe, you know, <laughs> with with the the leather wrapping, you know, the the maple inlays in the in the front baffle, um, the, the trickle down technology from you know, from other series, you know, for the tweeter, um, you know, so does Fopper didn't just create a marketable and reasonably priced loudspeaker. These speakers are works of art, 
that anybody would be proud to own, you know? So what was the inspiration behind that? And um, do you feel this is something that Sonus Faber is going to continue to explore? Uh, and are you going to have any, uh, any involvement with that? Oh, um, yeah. First of all, you have to know that I'm particularly uh, linked to the, to the story of Lumina. Okay. Um, once, because as, as you said, we did in a, in, a, in a moment, we did the project in a moment which uh, was, uh, you know, crazy for, 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 the, for the planet. Um, and so it was a little bit more difficult to um, to execute the the project uh, since uh, you know the, the the company was closed and, uh, and and you know the people were scared and uh, a lot of different uh, different things were happening. Um, Italy got hit pretty hard, if I if I'm cor uh, correct. I mean, oh were... yeah, I mean Italy was was uh, was a disaster at the beginning, uh, yeah. and. Uh, and, you know, uh, not nobody was prepared in, you know, on the planet, but especially, mm -hmm. especially the, the the north of Italy in particular, where you have a lot of companies and, and, and you know the density of the population is pretty high. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it was a, it was a quite quite huge uh, issue, um, and so the, the the process to develop the speaker was not uh, you know as linear uh, as linear as the other ones. Um, but we really wanted Lumina, and uh, Lumina is one of the example uh, I always make to to uh, you know to justify the work of my team, because Lumina was not requested by uh, the, the the managers. Let me say it was not requested by marketing or sales. Uh, we were in the middle of a discussion uh, where we were talking about the possibility to leave the entry level uh, let me say area of the market with the brand of uh, some fiber brand um, because it was really really difficult to transfer uh, the quality of the some fiber speaker at that price level uh, but uh, and, and and that where where I, I really like the story is we we had this challenge. We had this challenge to communicate uh, the, the 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 value of the brand uh, on a on an accessible product, and uh, I think the team uh, made uh, an amazing job uh, just creating the the list of elements we wanted on the product, uh, like what you said, the beautiful uh, real boot on the front panel, the leather the leather wrapping. The, the drivers, the, not, the, the, the paper cones, everything that was specified at the beginning was exactly what we use in the Sons Faber uh, premium, let, let me say, uh, segment. And uh, just removing part of the uh, design language of the company, which is the, you know, the lute shape, uh, and going with, with a simplified shape, a squared one, we made uh, we made a product that is clearly speaking about the, the brand, about the, the the value of the brand, uh, in a in a in a very accessible uh, package, and uh, and you know it's again it's a success when you you successful address an answer that was uh, uh, difficult to answer, to be answered. Um, so I, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really connected to Lumina um, because it was, it was, uh, it required more attention than uh, than other project, and uh, it was presented by the team to the management, and not vice versa. And so it's, uh, it, it's really, it's really a nice, a nice uh, memory to me, um, and. Uh, a very nice initiative by uh, by Jeff Poggi at that time, the CEO of the company, was to uh, give one, one pair of uh, Lumina one for each uh, employee of the company uh, with a little amplifier, uh, just to you know celebrate uh, the mm -hmm. fact that Sonos Faber was back uh, on work after the COVID and uh, was uh, back in the uh, in the entry level accessible range of uh, 
of products with uh, with Lumina. So it's it's a special project. I, I agree. I am sure it was challenging as well because uh, normally I, I would assume with um, and correct me if I'm wrong with a normal Sonus Faber project they just say hey just create something amazing and here's use whatever you need use whatever resources we have but with Illumina that you 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 literally had to stay under a certain budget to yeah. to make it make sense you know so you I, I don't know how you did it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you did it because honestly the Lumina the Lumina one was fantastic let's be honest but the Lumina 2 that's the one that ruined speakers for me, because, <laughs> at least hand mount speakers for me, because it, it's such a balanced, beautiful, amazing sound. It's 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 soft, but but articulate and, and the clarity is phenomenal. The bass is just fun. Uh, it, it's one of those speakers you could listen to for hours and hours and hours and hours. And I did believe me. And you never get tired of it. You know. and that's uh, you know it's that's exactly what we are searching for and i'm i'm happy you are describing lumina uh, with with that words because when uh, when we have to describe a sonus faber uh speaker we always use the word of uh you know natural natural sound and no no fatiguing sound um which is really important for us because again sonus faber is a product made for people that love music and they want to enjoy music, uh, not just you know the the four or five CDs with uh, with the most amazing recording. It's just living with music, and to do that, you have to create something that um, is uh, is pleasant for your ears, also for long, uh, long, long time, uh, long listening sessions, and uh, and yeah, it was not easy to make a speaker with that characteristic at that uh, that price point uh but again we we use it exactly the same recipe uh of the other sonos fibers and it it worked hmm. <laughs> it's really now, now um in comparison to lumina um what is is the process a lot different when you're creating something that's in the ultra high end or high end realm is, is it a different type of mindset or um, it, does it take longer? Like what, what is the difference in the process from creating something like the Lumina two or three or, uh, or, or now the, the new five that looks delicious, but uh, you know, from there onto your other series, what's the difference in, in, in process there? So in the process, I would say that there is no difference. Uh, we, we have a very detailed uh, process, which uh, one day will be printed on, on one of our walls. We're working on that. And we are trying to follow that process every time which, with every product, of course. Uh, so the, the, the steps are the same. Uh, what really changes between Lumina and Il Cremonese, for example, is, uh, is of course the, the, the freedom you have to express uh, yourself as a designer in the product um, and the level of details you will you, you, you have to reach when you design a speaker like the Cremonese or Aida uh, or Lilium or even the homage or Olympica line um, you know you you can concentrate on details uh, uh, that are, let me say, much more refined. Mm -hmm. And so you have the possibility to work with uh, uh, amazing artisans uh, which are doing a uh, uh, piece of arts, even if uh, we are talking about binding post or um, reflex port or everything is uh, at that level of complexity and refinement that, uh, you know, it's just amazing to to be part of that process because you are you are really working with uh, with uh, uh, with people which uh, are uh, which have quality in their blood. Mm -hmm. uh, but the process to arrive to the product is is pretty the same. Okay, you know, and a lot of people may not understand, but uh, a lot of your products are handcrafted, correct? Yep, and everything is made in Italy. Yes. Awesome. Um, 
and that's one thing that I, I did notice um, on, on the Luminas is that uh, the crossover network was phenomenally made. Uh, I'm not sure who does. If I don't know if you do it or somebody else does it, you're. I'm sure there's somebody else that I'm sure you have more more on your team. But the crossover network was just perfect. You, know, you crossed everything over right where it needed to be. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I keep I keep I keep uh, fainting over this. You know, you <laughs> this, know also, this product. Also, also in that case, uh, the, the process is the same. That that means that uh, you have some elements like uh, natural material for the drivers, paper and silk. Uh, you have, for cost reasons, you have uh, ferrite magnets and not neodymium, for example. Um, but you have a target which is the same of all the other speakers. We have a we have a target curve that is always that always must be respected, and we have a listening panel inside the Sonos Faber team, which has to say yes or not uh, in in each case. So mm -hmm. uh, we we you, you have to obtain a result that is, that is acceptable for the company rules and the people that are listening to the speaker with less elements, of course, in case of Lumina. Lumina, both Lumina 1 and Lumina 2, they they, they are using a, a, a first order crossover, so pretty, pretty simple crossover. But the fact that it's so simple imply that the driver must be perfect, because mm -hmm. otherwise you have to correct a lot of, uh, you know, uh bouncing in the in the frequency response and you can you can't do it with uh, just three components so uh in that in that uh, in that case uh, the work to obtain a, a, an amazing sound from a very simple product like lumina it's more difficult than mm -hmm. obtaining the, the the best sound uh, uh, uh from from a product like aida where you have basically no limits um so everything must be really super well calibrated so mm -hmm. if i'm using that capacitor that capacitor is doing all the job so the capacitor must be exactly what i wanted to to use uh, uh in the project that resistor that inductance you know everything must be exactly what we specified otherwise you know the the final recipe doesn't doesn't work that's incredible. You know, I, uh, it's funny you say all that. I brought my girlfriend into the, into my, into my private domain in here. This is my, this is my sanctuary of listening. Um, I know. It's, covered, it's covered in video equipment right now, but uh, I, um, I brought her in because uh, I, I received a pair of speakers from another brand that I will not name, uh, but it is another, uh, you know, well-known brand. And I had her sit down because I was experiencing something that was abnormal. Um, and I said, you know, I want you to listen to brand A and I want you to listen to the Lumina 2s. It was at the Lumina 2s at the time. Mm -hmm. And she listened to brand A and she's like, well, you know, the the, the voices. And, and this is someone that doesn't, you know, know the te technological terms, terminology of audio. So she was just using normal people terms, you know? Mm -hmm. So she said, oh, you know, it, the voices sound a little, it's too much, you know, too much voices and you can't really hear the music. And I said, I, that's what I heard. I just wanted to make sure, you know, and then I put on the Lumina twos and she's like, wow. <laughs> she's like, you could hear everything, you know, perfectly. You could hear the voices, the music, the beats and everything. And I think that was your goal it was to create, like you said, a balance, a neutrality, something that that is enjoyable to listen to that doesn't cause fatigue. Yes. You succeeded, my friend. You totally succeeded. <laughs> Thank you very much. I will pass this comment to the guys. <laughs> All right. Okay. So is, is there anything you can share about future projects, either personal or Sonus Faber related that you'd you know like to talk about or even drop a hint about? And actually, a good question is, are you still taking on uh, personal commissions uh, aside from Sonus Faber, or are you exclusively with Sonus Faber? Uh, no, I'm exclusively with the, with Macintosh Group. Okay. Uh, so I'm not taking external commission. 
but there is one big project in uh, in my private life that is going to happen in October, which is my first uh, song. <laughs> oh wow! Congratulations! <laughs> Thank you very much. So that's that's the most important one. And uh, talking about Sonus Faber, yes, we have some uh, amazing product in the in the in the line uh, ready to be uh, released. Uh, I can I cannot tell you uh, exactly what they are. Uh, but you have to keep in mind that Sonos Faber is, uh, is as I said, in a moment of uh, growing. And uh, uh, our, our credo is that uh, um, a, an eye hand quality sound must be enjoyed by our customer in uh, many ways. Many ways, as, uh, also because, I sa- as I said, uh, people are listening more music today. Uh, and and we have to understand, we have to accept that people are listening music in different ways. They are listening music in the cars. They are listening music music with smartphone and smart devices. They are listening music music, um, uh, you know, outside and and, uh, and, uh, and 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 walking and having fun and and doing sports. So every place where people are listening music and enjoying quality of life, we want to be there. And so the the, the, pro, the product you will see in the future of, uh, of, uh, of our company will be not only just uh, a passive loudspeaker, but we will grow also in the, in the um, active segment, uh, in the car corporations, um, in the CI, uh, custom, custom, uh, um, custom installation world. Uh, really, we want to be uh, one of fav- one of the favorite way to listen music, uh, beside the, the you know the, the the environment. So you know, I I noticed that custom installation across the board across the industry is becoming more and more and more popular because people want to hide their speakers in their walls, which I think is is madness. Uh, but <laughs> you know. I, the, there's a huge demand for it, you know, and a lot of other companies, I know Focal is now getting into that and a a couple other high-end companies are getting into custom installation, which I think is is fantastic. I think that's, you know, if I can get to the point where I'm, where I go into my home theater and I said, yeah, Sonus Faber, uh, you know, is the all hope Sonus Faber home theater installation, custom installation. That's a good place to be in life. I think. (laughs) <laughs> yes, uh, I, I have to say I completely agree with you. I mean, uh, three years ago, uh, when when we started to to talk about the custom installation project, I was one of you know the most skeptical one, um, just because you know we we are known for the beauty of our speakers. So mm-hmm. if we have to 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 design a speaker that will be completely hide. Uh, you know, it, it was a sort of contradiction. Uh, but also in that case, I think we found a way to be really sans faber. If you think about the uh, Palladio Level 6, where you have the option to have a beautiful wood panel in the speaker to show the speaker. And uh, uh, even if the speaker is, is you know, uh, installed in a wall, uh, I, I, I think that, that there is always the way to communicate the, your brand, even if the product is a little bit uh, different from what your normal product looks like. Um, and, and so I think I think now we have more knowledge. We have the team is really motivated to do something like that, something um, that will improve um, the sound quality of of uh, theater rooms, uh, and uh, I, I think we made the right choice because now I can say that uh, uh, a Sonus Faber sound is more accessible, mm. uh, even for customers that are more in that uh, market of uh, you know everything hided and uh, and connected uh, to. Uh, multi-room situations or or, or custom uh, custom theater rooms. Um, so I, I, yeah, uh, again, is uh, is a beautiful moment because when 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 uh, when you have this perspective of expansion, it's it's really motivating, especially for a designer who is uh, normally always searching for for a change for something different. 
Um, so, yeah, again. Oh, you do offer, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of backtracking now. You do offer um, subwoofers. Yep. In your, in, is that only for Lumina, or do you have subwoofers for other lines as well? Uh, you know, we try to do, uh, we try to design subwoofers in the best possible way. Uh, means that uh, they have to be powerful. They have to go very um, low, low in frequency, because most of the people are using subwoofer in non theater solutions. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are doing uh, amazing passive loudspeakers, stereo systems, and we know that. A subwoofer or every kind of speaker must be musical as well. Mm. Um, so our ambition is to do subwoofers that really can work in both both world. Um, and I think, especially with the with the with the Gravis line, the the five and six, but also the three, uh, we are accomplish uh, accomplishing both of the both of the solutions. Uh, if you have uh, the opportunity, I, I invite you to try one of those woofers, especially with our bookshelf, uh, also the Luminas. Uh, you will hear that they are really respectful to the to the music as well. Um, we are, for example, incorporating an uh, an uh, high high signal uh, input, mm -hmm. high level signal input. Uh, just because we 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 listen and we decided that uh, especially for stereo application, that connection is more respectful, more coherent uh, with with the passive speakers. Um, so it's we are we are really trying to look both world and respect both world. Awesome, awesome. Well, you know what, Livio, I want to thank you so much. For coming Thank on the you show, you. Thank spending you. some time with me. Um, I hope someday. Oh well, first and foremost, congratulations on your son. That's going to be a great adventure. Um, I can only imagine how how excited you are. So, I'm uh, a little bit scared. <laughs> is this your first? Yes. Yeah. See, I'm. I'm still. I haven't had one yet. So, I. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm right there with you because yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm push. I'm pushing forty. And I haven't had a kid yet, and I'm I'm, I'm excited because I think uh, someday it's going to be a possibility. But uh, who knows? Maybe you know, in 20 years, I'll be interviewing your son. You know, <laughs> might, be a, might might be a possibility. Be um, nice. But uh, you know, hopefully, I'll I'll be uh, in a bigger room or something, or more lights or something. Here. <laughs> and you would have a pair of Aida, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll. Have, <laughs> I'll graduate, but uh, yeah, thank you so much. I uh, you you were great. You're you're a fantastic guy, and um, I, I hope to get to talk to you more often, and and you know share my experiences with you and everything because I feel that uh, you're with a company that is is in for the long haul. You know, is is making right the right decisions, is doing it right, and their craftsmanship is phenomenal phenomenal so thank you very much thank you very yeah much. i, I right, really buddy. enjoyed the conversation and uh i really enjoy how we interact with uh, on social media mm -hmm. uh, i really enjoyed your I, I really like your enthusiasm for our product and i'm i, I like I, i'd like to thank you for for that for that no problem uh, it's it's really the best uh you know the best result when you have people that are enjoying your products in that uh with that enthusiasm. So thank you very well, much. I, I think we, we, when you're, when you're <laughs> dealing with, you know, reviewers and, and journalists and stuff like that, um, it, you could see it, you could see it in their face. You could see it in, in the way they're explaining it. Um, even though, even though it's, you know, primarily scripted, uh, just writing about you, the product, it's, it's, you could tell when someone likes something and someone doesn't like something, you know, and, it, I think it was more than obvious that I, I enjoyed it. So, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it was pretty clear. And thank you, Livio, so much for joining me. And uh, everybody, please uh, tune in next time. Uh, we are we're going to be continuing Hi Fi Hour every week, and I'm going to have a guest every week. Um, 
And this week, Livio really, really gave me a treat because I've been wanting to talk to him for quite some time. So thank you for your time again, Livio. And everybody, we will see you soon.